I'd like to say welcome back to the channel, and we are on another adventure cross country tonight. This time I'm stuck out here on the two lane. Uh, the subject I figured that we talk about tonight is uh, just general preparedness, like stuff that like not the over the top preppers where you got five million pounds of things stashed away, but just general things that have been passed down generations through the families. And things that you can practice for if that day ever shows up. Um, starting with gardening, you know, it's it's one of those things that everybody's like, oh, I'll garden, grow my own food. Well, yes and no. Um, yeah. Put it into practice. Uh, if you can practice growing things now, it makes it less stressful when that situation comes about where you have to. Um, I would say that if you have a separate location that you plan on going to, if something were to ever happen, uh, to you to go there in the summertime and start a small garden. See what grows there and what doesn't. Spend some time there on the weekends with a garden because it gets to the point where you need it. You got to be able to make sure the things you want to put in the ground are going to be able to be sustained by that ground. Um, and grow things that you enjoy. Don't just grow random things because if you grow a bunch of stuff that you don't like, you're not going to eat it. So, the one things I would strongly suggest to grow are root vegetables. Families for Thousands of years have been growing root vegetables because they're easy to maintain in a root cellar. Which, now I know a bunch of people don't have root cellars, but you can do some research in how to store potatoes, carrots, onions, root vegetables for long periods of time because they have the ability to be stored for long periods of time. Not only just dry storage, but you can can them too. And that's another thing to get into. Um, if you didn't know how to can, maybe your grandmother, or maybe your mom, or you know, someone in your family knows how to can. It's a valuable skill to learn because it's a way to preserve food that you grow yourself, that you can maintain as long as you have the supplies to do it. Ball jars, rings, lids, that kind of stuff. You can put a bunch of stuff away and canning. And the thing is, these are all skills that you can use every day of the year. And no one's going to think twice about it. It's not like you're tipping your hat that you're being, you're into the preparedness lifestyle. These are things that have been done for generations to sustain food for families. Um, It's nothing over the top or crazy that someone's going to look at you like, what the hell are you doing? Excuse my language. But it's something that you can invite friends to learn to do. Maybe to entice friends into learning to be prepared by just not even talking about it, just doing things like gardening or canning, things like that, just to, especially people you really care about, you know, introduce them mildly to it and then slowly build your way into that conversation. Don't just blindside with the preparedness conversation and I know it's hard I've <laughs> I've done it probably more than anyone by blindsiding people that conversation and they don't know how to handle it so co coax people into it by doing things that don't seem crazy to them and then slowly work into that conversation uh, Learn how to run a smoker, you know, smoking food, dehydrating food, making beef jerky. Making beef jerky, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the exact life, shelf life is on it, but I'm sure if it's packaged with the right things, it's probably a year, year and a half. Now, like I said, if packaged correctly, it might not be that long. I would do some research into it. But that being said, you know, things like that. Or 
if you're into hunting, like skinning deer or processing deer or canning meat. I mean, there's so many topics that you could take off and just, these are everyday skills that you can have and learn and not feel like, have people think that you're just this freaking crazy person. And it's things that you can build a bond with and maybe build some relationships where you find people that are like-minded. Um, you know, especially gardening. You know, maybe your wife's got friends who's into gardening. Maybe their husbands like to hunt. You know, make friends that way. Learn to do things like that. Uh, one thing I've been trying to figure out is how to make yeast. Well, it's not really making yeast, but like if you watch some of the cooking shows, like pizza dough places have what's called starter. And it's basically homegrown yeast that they do themselves. And it can just, you can constantly build it and you don't need to have dry yeast on hand. So like, it's something I've been trying to research and learn. Just, you know, and it's things like that you could learn from people and maintain as a skill set. Um, just normal, everyday things like that. You know, the canning thing is going to be huge for the simple fact that you can can your own stuff, and that stuff will, say you, have, you do a big garden. You know, you can can a bun, you can can pickles, you can can beets, you can can corn, carrots, peas, and have it all where it doesn't come out of your budget every every month in the summer, and you can stash it away, and in the wintertime, you've got these fresh vegetables that you canned yourself that don't have all the preservatives and everything else in them. And that's the other thing I would say, is when you buy garden seed, make sure you're buying heirloom seed. Don't buy genetically altered seed. And genetically altered stuff, yes, may grow better for the first season, but it's not as reliable to continue to use it day in and day out. Or year in and year out, excuse me. Because of its being a hybrid seed, where heirloom seed, you can harvest the seed from for years to come after that. So keep that in mind. Like when you're buying garden seed, buy heirloom seed. Um, make an herb bed and have it like in your window, in your kitchen in the wintertime. You can grow herbs year-round because your house is temperature controlled. As long as it can get to the sun, you should be able to grow herbs. Um, you know, but definitely put, like, if you're, if for long-term sustainability, you need to be able to grow a garden. You need to be able to produce food for yourself. And if you think you're just going to go out and throw a garden in, yeah, you may get lucky. You may not. <laughs> and experimenting with getting lucky is not, you don't want to be playing that game when your life depends on it. Because there's going to be a chance that that crop could fail anyways. But the more practice you have at it, or the better chance that you have for it not to fail, there's a better chance of odds of survival in that situation. Um, another thing is animal husbandry. You know, have some chickens. You don't even have to have a bunch of chickens. Like, me and my wife were talking, well, my brother has some chickens, and we get eggs from him, and they've got chickens that, like, for between eight people, like, the chickens make more, pretty much more eggs than we can eat at this point, but, um, have two, three chickens, learn how to take care of them, okay, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> you go get a chicken from the chicken, or an egg from the chicken coop, and have an egg out of the store, you will know the difference immediately, uh, it's one of those things that, there's nothing better than farm fresh eggs. The other thing is, depending on if you're willing to do it, rabbits. High production animals like rabbits and chickens where the food 
can be produced daily and at a rapid rate because rabbits reproduce rapidly. So if you had to, if you had the rabbits, you could produce a high volume of meat rabbits if you wanted to, but learn how to handle them, maybe three, four at a time. Don't get all crazy. Like this spring, my plan is I'm actually going to get some goats. Uh, I've done a bunch of research into goats. I like the idea of them, and not for milking goats. Like I'm not concerned with the milking goat. I might get a couple milking goats eventually, but it's not my goal initially. My initial idea is meat goats. So figure out ways that you can produce some some fresh meat or protein for yourself and learn how to handle these animals. And you can you can do this in the city. Like you can have a couple rabbit cages and a small chicken coop depending, you know, unless you're living in like an HOA or something where they prohibit those things, but most places, you know, most towns, if you just own your own house and you have a backyard and there's no HOA, like there's pretty much nothing stopping you from having a couple chickens in a small run with a small chicken coop where you can get two, three, four eggs in the morning from it. Um, or having a small pen with some rabbits in it where you, you're learning to control these these animals. But the other suggestion would be is if you live in a city, don't live in a city. Like, yes, there's benefits to being in a city, but just try to get to the country if you can. If not, and if it's not feasible, but you like where you're at, like, learn to do those things where you're at. Um, if you have an apartment, Put a couple pots out on your patio, because most apartments have little decks on them. Put a couple planter pots out there, or planter boxes up on the railing, and grow grow a few, uh, grow, put like a tomato plant in the corner, or put a few uh, peas or beans in, in a planter box on the railing, you know, just to learn how to maintain and grow these things. Um... And, you know, talk to friends about these skills. If you have friend, like, if you have someone who's really good at gardening, like, pick their brain, you know, learn, learn from them. Or if you have someone who grows, you know, or farms or whatever, and you want to learn how to, like, raise rabbits, if you know someone who raises rabbits, talk to them. Like, having conversations about these things, like, you can have these conversations without freaking people out. Like, it's just have the ability to just talk about finite things, individual, like, pieces here and there. Like, you don't have to go throw the whole book at them and scare the bejesus out of them. Which I don't consider myself to be that person because all I'm doing is stacking skill on top of skill on top of skill. Use the your ability to make friends and learn from those friends things that you may not necessarily be the best at. Or maybe they're really good at them, and, like, you see a benefit in having them maybe be part of, part of your community. Because that's going to be the biggest thing is community. Because, you know, that's what it's going to take is community. So, like, you know, talk to them. Like, learn, learn these things and then slowly have the conversation about, well, what if this happened or what if that happened? You know, slowly. And just learn things. And, like, sewing. Sewing's another thing. Like, learning everyday skills, like old, old world skills, are going to be absolutely... Uh, priceless in an SHTF situation. Like, old world skills, because you got to remember, like, old world skills, like, a lot of our, well, I'm almost 40. My grandmother grew up during the Great Depression. Um, like, they remember when things were bad. Like, 
they they had to grow their garden. Like that was part of that was a main part of their their survival was growing gardens every year and stockpiling their food because they didn't go to the grocery store because money wasn't as prevalent then. Um, it's always good to learn old world skills where you can rely on yourself and not rely on a system. Like, I'm part of the system in what I do by, by driving this truck. But at the same time, I worry about my old world skills. Splitting wood, running a chainsaw. But running a chainsaw is not really an old world skill. But being able to harvest firewood and knowing what firewood I'm looking for kind of thing, which will, that'll be another conversation completely, is harvesting firewood. Um, but, like, learn just general knowledge, and that's kind of what I want to focus on tonight, was just learning general skills. General skills that you don't have to worry about someone looking at you sideways for learning, like gardening, or how to raise animals, or can can food, you know, all those things are old world skills that a lot of people still practice and are going to be absolutely vital in a bad situation. Um, this actually conversation has went on longer than what I planned for. I figured it'd be about 10 minutes, but there's a lot of things that you can learn. Like I said, sewing, gardening. Hunting, fishing, like, hunting, fishing, you can't really rely on because in that scenario, you're going to have a lot of people that are doing it. But, you know, sewing, like, if you can't go to a store to buy a new pair of pants, like, you need to learn how to fix the stuff that you have. Um, patching. Uh, knitting, even. Uh, but, like, those skills are going to be super useful to you in that scenario. So, like... Practice practice the skills that you can practice every day, in in front of people, and maybe they maybe they see you do it. Maybe it interests some of your friends that you didn't think it would interest in other times. So you use that to open up conversation if you can. Ah, uh, but I just figured that we kind of have a conversation about general skills that you could learn without setting off. A bunch of alarms and your your friends thinking you're crazy. So um, the thing, you know, the thing is, just do that and learn these things because it will benefit you. It will benefit your family and teach your kids these things. If you have children, like there's no reason that they can't learn how to run, say, a smoker or. Uh, pressure cooker or, you know, those kind of things to help with, like, canning and, you know, harvesting the stuff from the garden and how to make it so you can put it away for the winter. Um, so I just wanted to give a short video on it. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the support I've gotten. Uh, the first two videos I've dropped have really, really made me feel good that there's been as many views as there was. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you folks would, please subscribe, leave comments, uh, leave questions, 